cross, Jesus could say that it's finished. Father, I thank you the work of our spirit realm and everything was finished on the cross. He finished everything on the cross. And he said it is finished. At the last end of the week, Lord, there. Completely, complete. Finished. Father, we thank you for the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. And he became a sacrifice for us. And Father, he finished the work the Father has given to do. Father, we thank you this morning for that finished work. And this morning, Lord, we just thank you for everyone here in church and everyone online. And we command a blessing of God in each one of them. We command wholeness and fullness and completeness in each one of our lives. Father, if any is need healing or health, Father, we speak to our bodies and we speak health and life and completeness. And we thank you, that's what your word says. And we pray that blessing now and we thank you for everything. And we pray, Lord, Jesus could say the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. We just want to pray the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And you know, you need to preach and thank you, Father. You know, could I read a couple of verses just to show this? After Friday night, I went to bed and I woke up early in the morning. Now, could you, I don't want to, I just want to read one couple of verses. First Timothy 2, verse, first Timothy 2, verse 5, I guess. Maybe. Maybe, sorry, maybe. That's right, there. right, sorry. Right. I'm going to read this from verse 4. First Timothy 2, verse 4, AB. We will have all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. What's God's heart for all men to be saved? Does that end it? No. And come to the knowledge of the truth. That word there, knowledge, is epignosis. It's full discerning knowledge. And that's God's heart. God would have all men, women, boy, girl, everybody, be saved. I have quoted that verse for years in the gospel, for years, and I never quote the last bit of it. And come to the knowledge of the truth. We hear this. We hear the knowledge of the truth. This. There is one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. That's what we're saying here. Please, I'm not saying this to the offensive. How many mediators are there today? I mean, listen, I'm not going to name what everybody else calls mediators. But I'm just saying this, there is one God today, not one mediator, between God and man and man Christ Jesus. See, if you go into the vines, and you read that word mediator there, you'll read it, you'll read that the Lord Jesus Christ was the only one who was able to take that office up to be that mediator. Because this, he had to be divinely sinless and spotless. And he had to be, have a, be a man. And the Lord Jesus was only made them two possessions, he became a man, but he also was sinless and spotless because his deity was a God in the very origin. And there was only one way there between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Listen, there is no other way there. You and I can maybe listen to other things and other people say, I, tell you, I am not here to be offensive. I'm just here to turn and say what the scripture says. So read this again. There is, listen. God would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. What about there is one God and one leader? He's God and man, the man of Christ Jesus. Everyone on this earth must come to the mediator, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? I'm going to show you another verse. It's found in Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. I am not saying anything for a fan. I'm just going to read scripture here. Right, and that's part. Acts 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Listen. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I could name a lot of things here. But I tell you this. There is only one way to access salvation. It's through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's salvation and nothing else. And I can say a lot of things. But to tell you this, well, maybe sometime or somebody listening to this online, but I tell you this, if you need, you need the Lord Jesus Christ, it's your person too. But tell me this, do we honestly believe that with all our heart and put full 100% behind what we say? Other people in this world are, are looking for other mediators in other ways. There is no other way. Do we see as black and white as that? Do we see as John chapter 14? John chapter 14. 
we you think these other poor people are going and they literally believe in their heart what other people are telling them. And they've been brought up and they've been steeped in these things. And I was one of them persons. You know, they believe in their heart that what the people is telling them is the truth. Listen, God would have only been be saved and come to the full knowledge, the full discerning knowledge of the truth. Let me see this, John 14, verse 6. Jesus says unto him, Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There will be nobody come unto the Father except they come through the mediator, the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's salvation found in no other. You know what you see? Go with me to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Right. Verse 46 and 47. Look chapter 1, verse 46, A.B. and 47. Now, Mary comes along here. And this is what we read here. Look 1, verse 46. And Mary says, This is the Magnificat. My, my wife told me she learned the Magnificat skills. Some of she learned the Magnify the God. Masses were told in the and she went home and told her sister, what we learned today is good Sunday school. I learned to magnify the God. And this is it. Maya was asking her, no, I think it was last week I asked her, tell me this, her, what does the magnify the God say? And this is the term that he says, I said it. And Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. I mean, listen, Mary's soul was magnifying the Lord. Was her soul magnifying the Lord all the time? Probably not. But we're soulless. And sometimes when we have care and problems, we're not magnifying the Lord. We're way down with our soul realm and all the care. But at this point of time, Mary says this, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. This is what I'm going to say here. Again, I'm not saying, we need a Saviour. And she realized it was in God. Listen to this. And my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. I have only ever seen that before. Other people put other people up as mediums. The wrong just saying here is there is one God and one Savior. And everyone needs to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, even near here. And you see that there, but see that there if you go to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. We're going to read from verse 19. Uh, from, I'll read from verse 17. Luke 10, verse 17, you read. Luke 10, verse 17, you read. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Notwithstanding in this rejoice, not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. When you and I receive the Lord Jesus Christ, and we call upon the name of the Lord, and we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart, Romans chapter 10, a free gift of salvation is given to you. By the Holy Spirit, as you acknowledge that as the Holy Spirit opens your heart to see that. Hear you this. Rejoice, your names are written in heaven. We have go stay here. Every morning you wake up, your spirit is rejoicing. What's it doing? It's rejoicing. Your soul's maybe not rejoicing. Or my soul. But I tell you this in all honesty the more and more we get on with God and we get a revelation, Right to this, the more and more you're going to walk up, your spirit will start rejoicing, you'll be rejoicing more. If your spirit's rejoicing 24 7 every day, can we see this next verse? I seen this, I went back, right? Notwithstanding, in this rejoice that the spirits are subject unto you, but they are rejoice because your names are in it. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. Please. And all I'm just saying to you is, the body of Christ needs to know there's a difference between your soul and your spirit. 
And when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, your spirit gets saved. But your soul, there's a work God has to do in your soul, sir. The work of the cross sorted out every blessing and everything in your spirit. Now, if you don't see the two differences here, wrong, do you? Hey, listen, I have a verse up here. It's First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 23. See, everyone online and in here, see if you and I don't grasp what happened the night you get saved and all this happened in your spirit. Then I tell you, yes, you will struggle with the Bible, but you'll read things and you'll say, and you think, well, I'm not doing this right. I can't be saved, or I'm not walking right. Well, I can't be saved because so and so or such and such says this. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For God has done a work in your spirit. Your spirit was dead in trespasses and sins. I don't want to quote them in the scriptures here. First, Ephesians 2, verse 1 to 3 will tell you your spirit is dead in trespasses and sins. When you've come to the Lord Jesus Christ and received him as your personal Lord and Savior, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you Spirit is regenerated, born again. And that's what Hebrews 12, verse 23 will tell you, maybe the spirits of just men made perfect. By, listen to this wee bit, by the gospel. How's, how's it? By the gospel, by the true gospel. And I'm speaking of faith and native of the true gospel. And this dispensation. And the true gospel is a, listen to this, it's a free gift given by God. Right? And there's nothing to be, you don't have to do anything to earn it. It's a free gift. And Jesus said, I finished on the cross. He finished the work for us. The free gift, the Lord Jesus gives. Okay then. When we come along, we incline to it. And I was saying on Friday night, listen, it's maybe you haven't heard of this teaching out there. Wait, I'm going to put on read this verse again. First, Acts chapter 11. Now, again, you know, I'm not reading this to a friend, are we? I'm just Acts chapter 11. I'm going to read a verse, two verses. Okay. Now, there's a whole pile of different Gospels out there. Okay. Right. And if you read 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3 and 4, you have to there's another Jesus, another Gospel, and another Spirit. Right? That's what it says there. We hear this. Peter comes along. And he starts to preach a message. Let me show you this week then. I'm saying this with Friday night. And I'll read from verse 13. Right. Matter of fact, read verse 12. And the Spirit bade me to go, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 12, 18. And the Spirit bade me to go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these, these six brethren accompanied me and went into the man's house, and he showed us. How he had seen an angel in his house which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. Listen to this wee bit. Who shall tell thee words? For by thou and all thy house shall be saved. That is the only thing we need to do as born again believers. All we need to do is know the truth and speak the truth. That is only our job. It's not my job to convert you or convert anyone. For by the way, I can't convert anyone. Please. And we hear this wee bit. We hear this wee bit. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell. See that? Bit? What, what, see the words that Peter spoke? What happened? The Holy Spirit fell. How was it in your bed? Right? What's this now? As I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, a soft on us at the beginning. So the role of the born again believer in the day is to speak the message so that the Holy Spirit can fall on those believers. Now the believer, unbeliever will need Acts 16 verse 14, the Holy Spirit to open the, believer, the unbeliever's heart. You, you need an open heart to receive the message. Okay. On them the Holy Spirit falls. 
whenever they have an open heart for the unsaved. Next, Matthew, oh, right, Luke 24, verse 45, will tell you Jesus come along and open their understanding. I mean, we should be praying for unsaved and open heart to receive the message. And for those that are saved, Father, just pray for an open understanding that when the truth is spoken, the Holy Ghost will fall and they will be able to see the revelation because they have an open heart, an open understanding to receive that truth. Okay. And we do this. Peter comes along, he preaches here, and he says this, As I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell, verse, and, and fell on them. And that's the beginning. Go down to verse 17. For as much then as God gave on them the like gift as he did unto us, we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? <clears throat> what was I that I could withstand God? And I was saying on Friday night, if you go into Acts 10, read the whole of Acts 10, and then read Acts 11 down to 1 to 18. And if you want, go back over again. You see how Peter was told by the Holy Ghost, and Peter was a Jew and still lived in his life with the customs of a Jew. And he was still, even though he could see it, he was still holding on to the customs of the Jews. And that was holding a mindset and saying himself. And he didn't believe that he would go and do this or that because the Jewish teaching in his mind wouldn't allow him to do that. Thing. And here's the key to this. What these this verse here. And what then as God gave them the like gift he did unto us, we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. What was I that I should withstand God? You listen, doesn't it? For when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. When you preach the, the true gospel in this dispensation, God grants repentance. Please. God grants repentance. We don't have to tell believers in this dispensation, repent and believe, because that's a work. Repentance, if you have to do it, is a work. And it's not the free gift. The gospel is a free gift given to those whose hearts are open by the Holy Spirit and persuaded by the words that are spoken. And that's a word called pytho in the Greek. And that's under the word obey, pytho. And it's the words of the truth of the revelation of the word. Truth persuades the believer into doing it. So the unbeliever is not believing, but it's the truth of the word that's persuading the heart of the unbeliever to believe. And it's all of God. Can I tell you this? In this dispensation, to teach, it's the same way. The, the word of truth is spoken. The Holy Spirit opens and persuades the, the believer's heart to believe the revelation. And it's all of God. That's got nothing to do with man. And our job is only just to stand there and speak the truth so that you equip the Holy Spirit with the tools to do the work of the Holy Spirit. And here's the key. If we have, if in, say, in the church this morning or online, we have an open heart, open understanding to receive the truth, or if we have an open heart to receive the message of the gospel. Some in the meeting will be saved, and only on the line will be saved, or others will make receive revelation knowledge. You need that. Listen, it's all of God, and it's all of Him. And our job is only to know the truth. And it's the revelation the truth when spoken that equips the Holy Spirit to fall to the world. Please. I was taught you need to do this and you need to do this. And for years, a young boy going to Sunday, goes, you need to believe, believe, believe. One day, well, I, I, well, I'm there meeting, and all of a sudden, the first time I had seen myself, I said, died for my son. All of a sudden, I thought, I'm very sick. The Lord, had, I didn't realize that the Lord had opened my heart to understand Christ's day. And it's the same with the, later on in your soul as well. It's the same. God, you must, somebody must stand up and give the tools for the Holy Spirit to do the sanctification work in the believer through the Word. And if we don't speak the truth, we leave the Holy Spirit for us. If we are not giving the tools to the Holy Spirit to do the work in the believer. Right. Now, what do you see this now? Right. That's quite a mouthful of that. Listen, you see this here. So can we go to right, Romans chapter 5, verse 1? Romans chapter 5, verse 1. 
So we go to the Passion Translation. Right. We'll read this for the Passion Translation, and then we're going to read it for the AV. And then later on, I might come back to the Passion Translation. But I don't have an answer already. But go ahead. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. That's quite very we right in this. Our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us, and he now declares us flawless in his eyes. Let me that again. Our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us, and he now declares us flawless in his eyes. How do you see yourself? See? You need your mind renewed to who God sees you, not how you see yourself. And what's this be done? This means that we can now enjoy true and lasting peace with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, has done for us. That's verse 1. Our faith guarantees us permanent access into this marvelous kindness that has given us perfect relationship with God. See the gospel. The gospel has given you a perfect relationship with God. You have now God's righteousness. And you now have peace with God forever by the gospel. Nothing you done. It's all done by God. You know, this morning, see us here. I will see the difference is what I'd like to see this morning is this verse is that pay your whole spirit, soul, and body to deal with See this morning, I know I'm going back again. If you don't know what happened in your spirit, you're going to struggle. So the simple reason is, if you don't walk right in your soulless realm, everybody and you will think you're not right. See the tone. And completely, see the difference is, it's not what you think, it's what God says you are. And God says, by the gospel, the Lord Jesus Christ made you righteous, and you're perfect, and you're complete, and a few thoughts, almost never mind. But you need to know what in your mind. And that's where a pile of believers are struggling with you. But why is this here? What's the difference? The difference between justification, and this morning I would just like, maybe I'm going to get you, I'm just going to get the wee bit of justification. But the difference between justification and sanctification, by the gospel, God has declared you justified. Nothing you've done. The Holy Spirit came along, the truth was spoken, Christ died for your sins, your heart was opened. And you receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And you call upon the name of the Lord. And if you confess with your mouth, you step into all the blessings of God. Please. If you don't understand what's going on, I said, I don't, please, I don't mean to be cheeky. If you've made that relationship with God, every spiritual blessing is on your life. And it was all given to you as a free gift. And that's all in your spirit. And see, you need to know this. That's just there's something inside you that supercharges you. And you realize today because of what our Lord Jesus done, the one God and one leader, and you've got He done it all on the cross, and He restored and brought a free gift into my life and brought me into it is a relationship with God which will last forever. It's all God. That's quite a mouthful. Of it. You know, I here. Could I show you this wee bit? I've written this down. The difference between the two gospels, justification, said the work of the Holy Spirit, right? Justification happened the night you received the two gospels. God declared you righteous. That work was done. The problem is your mind is not renewed. We don't understand that because righteousness means or justification means. You need to run deeper into the scripture to understand. But the work of justification was done by the gospel. And that work was done in your life. Okay. We, we see this one We hear, I'm going to read this. We out this time. Justification is the work of God on the sinner when the true gospel is preached. Okay. Justifying of the sinner is once for all and forever. The believer's spirit. Hebrews 12, verse 23. Read phrase in Hebrews 12, verse 23. Right, so I'll show you better. 
unto God the judge of all, unto the spirits of just men made perfect. What's your spirit? It's just and it's made perfect. And it was by the gospel. This was all the work of God and it was all done by the gospel. But you as here, see if you don't know that, honestly, if you don't know you stand before God, God's spotless, faultless, because of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And see, oh, in religion and every our religious mindset would have us doing works. What for? You can't add any more to that. The work was done by the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. All you had to do was, you didn't realize this, the Holy Spirit opened your heart. You heard the truth. The truth persuaded you. And God supernaturally saved you. And what we should be doing today, we should be rejoicing. Hallelujah. Why? See, today, right. but I'll say this all a wee bit. God justifies the sinner forever when the gospel persuades the sinner, thus bringing in the work of justification into the sinner's spirit forever. By the true gospel. And that's what your spirit is. Remember, I told you to play your whole spirit, soul, and body. God has, your spirit is perfect, complete, every that. Do you know that? And there's a work of justification done in your spirit. Right. What will the revelation of, of justification of righteousness do? Now, wait, wait, I show you this. Go with me. What, what does justification mean? Well, I'll tell you what. I might have time here, but if you go to the banks, Royce Lesson and Royce take a note from that by now. Justification is in the banks, under the heading of banks. You'll find justification. And you'll read all what justification means. And I'll roughly pull a wee bit out here by right now. There's a Greek word called dios, D I K A I O S A S. C B signifies the establishing of a person as just. At a quiver from guilt forever. God stands and justifies those that are guilty and acquits them forever by a world press. And it's God's son. You know what Romans 8 says in, in the translations without the wee bit of the hat? There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are Christ. You're not an element. You don't want to go in a whole bit. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20. You were in Adam. You're not in Adam anymore. You're in Christ. And that's what it says. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. For us in Adam all day, even so in Christ shall all be remembered. We were born because of the fall in Adam. But see, once we're born again and we see the Lord Jesus Christ, we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, we can lift out. We need eyes to take Sunday school. Now we hear it on ISIS savings. You are now in Adam, but if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the first with the mouth and believe in the heart, God takes you out of Adam and puts you in Christ. And that's what we'll say here. Nothing can ever put you in Adam again. I just tell you that. And then one Sunday I says to him, a couple of Sundays later, I says to him, tell me this, who in here is it? Has anybody ever believed in the Lord Jesus Christ? And this week here, it's an Australian that hung up. And I says, you wouldn't be, you say, mother. Mother. She says to me, Remember the day you turned around and says to me, when you told us that if we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, we'd be taken out of God and in Christ. Well, that day I just went home and I says, Look, again, the Holy Spirit was over her heart. And she seen the truth. She got a revelation. Christ died. And she believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, And then she turned around and says to me, Wally, I just simply believe what you told me. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And can I ask you a question? Do you like to tell us you're not saying? Please, that's as simple as that. But here's the key. People go to church and get saved. They don't realize what happened to them. God declares them righteous, perfect, forever by the gospel. And what? Let me show you this. Right. So what does justification mean? Right. The establishing of a person as just at acquittal from the guilt of the church. Now God has done it. 
And God has declared you the righteousness of God in your life. God has given you his righteousness. And you stand before God, before God, spotless with his righteousness. And can you imagine the day taking somebody in who's done a whole pile of things on you, and you have a whole pile of children, and you bring them into the same possession as your own children, even though you've done a whole pile of things, bad things on you. So that's what God Jesus has done us. He's brought us right in. And what the Lord Jesus Christ has, you have. And that's been given to you as well. I want to just say this, it's getting this in, uh, into a mindset of realizing what the gospel done for you. Please. But I tell you this, this would take tears out of a stone if you get a revelation a realization. Go with me to Isaiah, Isaiah 32, verse 17. Isaiah 32, verse 17. Read this here. Isaiah 32, verse 17. The revelation of righteousness will give you assurance forever. You know what I said there? The revelation of righteousness will give you assurance forever. The revelation of righteousness will do your work in your life and will give you peace. It's found in Isaiah 32, verse 17. Right. On the work of AB, on the work of righteousness shall be peace. What will the work of righteousness give you? Peace. Hear this, on the effect of righteousness, quietness, on the assurance forever. What will I give you? I'm not, I don't mean to go on, but you, you understand. What will, that, what will the work of righteousness do? I'll give you a peace. But you know you stand before God without a fault because of righteousness. What will the effect of it be? The quietness. I mean, this would assurance forever. Uh, people used to come to me, and uh, I was asked to go to the gospel hall one night to teach, uh, to speak, but I went to the gospel. I went to a place, uh, and I went on to the middle of the place, and I said, you know what's here? I profess to be saved, and all of a sudden, you know, I started to clean my life up, and I used to live probably better than a lot of you, and I got some luck with a whole lot of people. I was just, I just, and next time I went, I went to this man's house, the big farmer's house, and this old man, the elder, I went to Bon Joy, I went to, and he's done and sat in the house and started to talk about assurance. And it went on for about half an hour or 40 minutes. The next thing this big farmer man says to me, he says, Well, son, what do you think? I says, I haven't a clue what you're talking about. What do you mean? She said, I got saved out of full assurance. I says, I have never, ever had a doubt about my salvation. But I tell you this, and I got saved out of a revelation of righteousness, and I didn't know. Please. And people used to come up to me and say, you're doing this and you're doing that. Say, listen, I tell you that God has got nothing to do with my salvation, of my spirit. I know that now. So I would say this, when Christ died in the cross, God justified me. Please, if you don't know this, you'll come along and other people will come along. You're doing this and you're doing that. That has got nothing to do with your justification. That has to do with your sanctification. Has to do with the walk of labor, and that's in the shore. Right? That nothing to do your spirit. I know I'm going on that. You couldn't go over this often enough till you get a revelation of peace. Listen to what they said the work of rightness shall be peace. It doesn't say it may be peace, and probably will be peace. No, it shall be peace. I know if other fellows come to me, how, you, how come you're so certain and sure of your son's? Why do you not see that? I said. I did not know the work of raising was done on me. Do you, do you understand? You know a revelation of righteousness and justification when you stand before God without a fault. Your heart will maybe come along when you're no longer right, or somebody else will come along. Do you understand? Say, say, right, okay, why is this? We assume this. Go with me to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Romans 5, verse 1. Now, listen, I'm going to read this now out of the AV. Okay. We read it already out of the new uh, Passion Translation. Right. 
Therefore, being justified by faith. Okay, how are you justified? God persuaded your heart on the faith rose up when you touch that. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. How? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I mean, that's the way I read, I read this down. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace. I read the whole verse, we have peace with God. My Lord Jesus Christ. Justified. I got justified. How? Number one. By faith. The process. Next. Number three. We have present possession. Yeah. That's the way I would date I just uh, we have pre number four, peace with God. You're not trying to have peace with God. You have peace with God. You've come into a relationship with God. I tell you that that relationship is going nowhere forever. You come into that relationship because of the gospel. Yeah, let's read that. Through the channel. What's the channel? Our Lord Jesus Christ. There, let's go back again. You know, there is one God, one meteor, God of men, the man Christ Jesus. Go read the next week after that. Our Lord Jesus Christ, by accepting by accepting of Christ by, by faith, God declares the Son righteous. God, listen, God declares me righteous. I'm not declaring myself righteous. I'm declaring what God says I am. Please. I'm not saying I'm this and I'm not. And I'm not. I've been told by certain people around me, you're a big headed. No, I'm just declaring what God says. Please, I'm not. But you know, that's the problem is you need a revelation of who you are. Because everybody else will try and tell you who you are. Now you know who you are. Uh, please, yes, now. Right. Go with me to Romans chapter 5, verse 16. A.V. Romans chapter 5. Go on, on to your own. Romans chapter 5, verse 16. Romans 5, verse 16. A.V. I'm not as it was by one that sinned. So is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, Adam. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. God has given you a free gift. The gospel. Unto justification. They don't want it. Unto justification. The gospel led you to justification. You received it. So go to the next week, verse. Verse 18. I skip 17. In the back of 19. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon, upon all the condemnation, because of Adam, son, all were condemned. So we are this week. Even so, by the righteousness of one. The free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Tell me this. The free gift of the gospel came unto justification of life. Please. Honestly, you need a revelation of justification of righteousness. I'm not came by the gospel. Justification of life forever. Now listen. I read another wee bit. Right? Romans chapter, Romans chapter 4, verse 25. Make it back to verse 17 for the times in the Bible. Romans chapter 4, verse 25. Romans 4, A.V. Right. He was delivered for our offenses and we were raised again for our justification. Why was Jesus raised? For our justification. Christ died. He was prayed and he rose from the dead. I speak to him last Sunday. I was saying, you know, as Christ, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. And you must hear this man come up to me and shook my arm. And next thing he says, I really enjoyed that message there. And he's going to preach in another place in Monday morning. You're on later on. He says, I just went and preached in the resurrection. You need to preach in the gospel. Christ died. He was buried, but Christ rose again. And he was raised for our justification. And we stand today because of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Justified. 
I have a lot more things to say here, but wait, 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 wait. Right. Right. God has put you into a place of positional righteousness. You know what I said there? What has he put you in there? Your justification is a place of positional righteousness, and it's in your spirit. But God has a work to do in each one of us called a personal and a, or a practical righteousness, which is a work in our soul. But you must get the first one right first. Personal righteousness. God declares you the soul by the gospel. And God declares the sinner not a sinner anymore. This sinner is now righteous and he's a sin or her a sin forever. And all, see, we done teachings there, and if somebody wants it, no, we're pushing anything on them, but we done a teaching there on the, the true gospel. We done our teaching the possession and the privilege of the born again sonship. See, you need to know that before you maybe go into the soul realm. If you don't get this right, you'll read, start reading your soul realm and you'll read you're doing things wrong, and the other people will tell you, oh, you've lost your salvation because you're not doing this and you're not doing this. No. You need to know that position of who you are and the call because of the work of the Lord. And even after the soul, the soul walk, the soul walk is not according to how you walk, it's according to how you, the Holy Spirit, does the work in you by the revelation of truth. You ever said that? You can have a, a, a works mentality even after that. The Lord, as He leads and guides you by revelation, I can show the scripture, the verse, He will do a work in your soul realm. Remember that verse I read at the very start, 1 Corinthians 5, but pay your whole spirit, soul, and body to praise Him, let me prefer blameless. Who's going to do it? He's going to do it. You know, the next week verse says, I remember the Lord started showing me this years ago and He called me to do things. I said, Lord, I just got overwhelmed. I said, well, how am I ever going to do this? He was telling me to live by faith and do other things. Lord, this, I haven't a clue how this is ever going to work. I'm standing at Port Rush one evening, strong, and I said, well, this, all of a sudden this goes for five, we buy me. And I picked it up. And I turned over the back of the page, and it was First Thessalonians 5, verse 24. Faithful is he that calls you who also do it. Was up some revelation to me. I couldn't understand how I was ever going to do this. I was trying to work it out, but I was going to do it. And I said, that's what the Lord said to me. Faithful, I am faithful. That's the verse after. Faithful is he who calls you, also do it. Faithful is he who calls you, who will wholly preserve your spirit, soul, and body. He will do the work in us as we walk and follow him in this land. Right. Uh, there's a lot of other things I could say there, but listen, so we'll go back to that. Romans 5 verse 17 and finished. Romans 5 verse 17. Never read it last time. AV. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace on the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. How you reign in life? You reign in life by the grace and the gift of righteousness that's given you. Right? Can you go to verse 25? 21, sir. Romans 5, verse 21. Maybe. But as sin hath reigned unto death, even so may grace reign through righteousness. How does grace reign in your life? Through a revelation of righteousness. Did you hear that? I said that. How will grace reign in your life? Through a revelation of righteousness. And the first, this morning, you need to know positionally you have been given and made righteous and justified in your spirit. God has declared you righteous with his righteousness. How many times? 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. He made him to be sin for us and you so that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. What righteousness do you mean? You're made the righteousness of God. And listen, today you stand before God without a fault. And listen, here's the key. I went and that fellow the very last week. Can I tell you this in all honesty? You stand before him without a fault. And we, we're preaching a gospel here now. I was saying on Friday night, uh, then we will finish. First Timothy two verse first sorry, second Timothy one verse ten. I'm not going to go to verse nine for starting verse nine start teaching again. Second Timothy one verse nine. Right. Second Timothy one verse nine. Right. Just go read verse nine, not go to speak on. Who has saved us? On called us. Did you know that you get saved your call? Oh, but did you? Did you know we were called? 
the Holy Calling. Not according to his, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which is given us in Christ before the world began. Listen, there's a purpose and grace given to each one of us with a holy calling. And come on your life tonight and see it. Read this now. That's the bit. I spoke with on Friday night, so this is it. I don't want to speak, I just want to finish with this. Bit. And of course, I close the Bible. This is it. I don't want to much quote it tonight. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ. All this stuff in the verse before is now made manifest by the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who hear this? Who abolished death? What has he done? What has he done? Right? And brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Is that the gospel we're preaching? When Christ died on the cross, he abolished death. He brought life and in it, immortality to light through the gospel. I stood there, got the thing else last week. That's what I said, see today, we're throwing this. I don't want any of them. We're throwing them out. We're putting them in. We're putting them in. The next thing, officer, we're putting this man's coffin in. And by the way, that man, here's going again. That man has left. The spirit's left. I'm going to tell you, his spirit is immortal. But we'll live forever. And all we're doing is putting in the body. This man that we put in here is a born again believer. The spirit is absent from the body present with the Lord, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 8. Where's the spirit? Absent from the body present with the Lord. In the coming day, his body will be raised up and he'll meet the spirit. I'm going to tell you yesterday, go and receive a glorified body. We in this, we, we, we in this way, blessed are those who die in you. See, this afternoon, or I'm here, and even online, can I ask you a question? Are you sure you're in the Lord? Are you hide in the Lord? You get a revelation you're a sinner, Christ died for your sins, call upon the name of the Lord, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, will be from the dead, and God justifies you and declares your last blessings. Just want to finish. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for the power of sin your word. And Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We pray for everyone online and everyone in here in the meeting. And Father, we just pray that every one of us get a real revelation of the righteousness of the work that was done by the gospel and the revelation of the realization that we have been given an immortal spirit which will live forever and absent from the body, present with the Lord, and Father, we may live in the enjoyment of the peace of what the Lord Jesus has done for us. In these dark days, there's people running about. Father, we pray that, that Father, you'd help them Instead of walk by fear, let them live, help them to live by faith. Instead of living by feelings, help them to live by faith. And we pray that blessing on everyone now, and we thank you for everyone, and we command the blessing of God in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.